Welcome to Ark Studio. It's a tremendous privilege and honor to be with you again in Ark Studio. And it's a great honor and joy. It's always a joy to sit around the Word, to sit with the Lord, to share the Word. It's always it's to dig into God's Word. Because the Word says where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in their midst. So the moment we gather together around the world, he is in our midst. Is that not glorious? Hallelujah. And then His Holy Spirit, His power, His deliverance is here. And His Word is full of Spirit because His Word is Spirit Word. And we preach Spirit Word, not the letter, but the Spirit that brings life. Hallelujah. And as you listen to God's Word today, I pray, and this is our prayer for you, that God will touch you. Hallelujah, and deliver you and heal you in Jesus' mighty name. You are so welcome to um, share this video, invite friends and share this video with friends to watch with. You can hit the subscribe button on YouTube, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And we have our ARC studio meetings every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. South African time. Then we've got Pray for the World on a Monday. And our theme for this year is push back. So that's our prayer live stream, 9 p.m. on a Monday afternoon, South African time. And this coming week, Monday night, tomorrow night, Francesco Barros from Brazil will be our speaker again. And we love him. We appreciate him and Rosanna that's doing the interpretation for him. We love and appreciate them as part of the body, as our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Francesca had been serving as pastor for over 23 years. He has ministry throughout Brazil, Europe, Latin America and Africa. And Francesco has spent his life studying the Word of God, which has opened the door to deep revelation. He believes revelation is essential for growth in the body of Christ. And we appreciate him. We love his Word. We love his Spirit. We love Rosanna. We love her Spirit. And let us tune in tomorrow night as pray for the world around the world to pray together for God's people and for the souls to be saved and for the earth. Hallelujah. Now there's also video and audio streams that's available at PrayForTheWorld.com and then also you can sign up at PrayForTheWorld.com to receive information about upcoming live streams. Now we also do have prayer material that we give out every month for free that you can um, do your own daily devotional you can do bible study with a group with your family your job at school as students um, it doesn't matter where but there's prayer material that can help you every day and this new prayer material we've got for this month is enter in the world is getting more and more chaotic there is turmoil in the nations and trouble in people's souls but there is a place where we can hide from it all and receive peace and power are you ready to enter the secret place that is the place where there's peace and power and where there's God and that is in the secret place of the Most High hallelujah uh, Matthew 6 verse 6 but you when you pray go into your room and when you have shut the door Pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Amen. You can sign up at PrayForSA.com. You can sign up at PrayForUSA.us or PrayForTheWorld.com to receive your free prayer material. Uh, then there's 130 nations that have signed up with pray for the world that is glorious wonderful news now it includes denmark and new caledonia so praise god 134 nations that signed up for pray for the world so think of that 134 nations around the world receive the prayer material pray with us and use it to pray the word of god hallelujah that is glorious then as well, we've got an ARC prayer meeting on Saturday mornings, 8 a.m. South African time. And it is at um, arc.tv forward slash, slash prayer. 
Um, we also fast every Thursday as Ark, as Church Ark Church, we fast on a Thursday once a week. Uh, you can also listen to the Ark prayer, the audio, the rebroadcast. We've got prayer from 8 to 9, more or less, and then from 10 onwards, it's available. So the whole week until the next Saturday, you can tune in and listen to the audio stream of the prayer, which is always a blessing. And we've got so much testimonies coming back. Uh, people sent in their prayer request um, at our ARC office. They sent in uh, uh, info at ARC.tv. Uh, you can find information and send your prayer request. And there's a lot of prayer requests that we receive that we pray over on a Thursday. And we also pray over uh, the, the people that give and put their names down. We also pray over that. So there's always messages, uh, testimonies of healing, deliverance, provision, how God touched people. So we're very excited for that. So you can tune in at our with our uh, ARC church on a Saturday morning to pray with us. Now, let's sow a seed. This is part of God's word and it's always um, fun to do that. Praise the Lord. Now, giving is, um, giving is not giving to a man or having, let me Laura put it this way, not having faith in a man, but having faith in God. Our faith is in God, not in a man. That's why we give. And that's with the heart and the attitude we give. Uh, God doesn't mind if you have a nice home, a nice car, all the needs met. He doesn't mind. However, He is concerned if your heart is in those things and we're going to even see today in the message as God speak to his people about our hearts again because that is the gospel he's concerned if our heart is in those things um, in the money or in the materialistic things or the things of the world or the things in the world God doesn't want us to love the things in the world but he wants us to love him with our whole heart and then he doesn't mind he says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else shall be added to you so God doesn't mind that but he does mind where your heart is what would happen um God's concerned where our heart is. And then the question that I just wrote down here, what would happen if those things are taken away from you? Would you be totally devastated? And that's a question that God asks you and me to make sure that our hearts are in the right place. We are not dependent upon material things as our source, but we are dependent on God. He is our source of our provision he is our security of our joy, our happiness. He is our source. Hallelujah. And just remember, there's two places where we can store up our treasures. Either on the earth, in I want to say in earthly possessions, in the earthly banks, or there's a heavenly bank. And 1 Timothy 6 verse 17 says, Command those who are rich in the present world not to be arrogant nor put their hope in wealth. That's what God's saying. He, he does not mind you having these things. He just says, command those who are rich in the present world, in this world, not to be arrogant, nor put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. God do want us to enjoy things here on the earth, but He does not want our hearts to be in, in, in it. He wants us to rejoice in Him. And the moment we seek Him and His righteousness and our joy and our heart is in Him, then He does not mind to bless His children. Hallelujah. Luke 6.38 says, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be put into your bosom for with the same measure, the same way you deal out, it will be measured back to you. That's God's word. Um, and if you want to sow to ark today, the information is on the screen. Hallelujah. You can either then EFT 
PayPal, donate at ARC.TV, um, and you will please put your name as a reference because we do write the names. We make a list for our prayer meetings on a Saturday morning, so we pray over the names. And thank you so much for every email, every testimony, every prayer request, every seed that you've sown. Thank you so much. We love you, we appreciate you, and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name, that he will bless you, that he will see. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you see the hearts of your people. You see the seeds that they give, that they sow. We pray in this day, Lord, that you will bless them, that you will multiply, that, that they will reap the harvest of the seed sown, Lord, in this ministry for God. Not that they don't have faith in a man, Lord, but they have faith in God. And their hearts long after you and their heart and their eyes are focused on you. And with that heart and that attitude, they sow into your kingdom. And I thank you. Your word says, Lord, whatever we sow, we shall reap. Lord, and that you are the one that is the provider, the one that gives seed to the sower and the one that gives bread to the one that's hungry. Heavenly Father, and I speak your blessings, your love, your grace and your mercy over your people in this day, in Jesus' name. And I break every curse, every financial curse, every thought pattern, Lord, the thought patterns, the negative, uh, fearful thought patterns that people have, because they look around the world, they look to the earthly circumstances, they look to the banks, they look to the economy, and Lord, they fearful. And I pray in this day, Lord, as your people sow seed, that they will put their eyes upon the Lord and say, Lord, I sow this. My eyes are upon you. I give it to you. My eyes are upon you because you are the one that provides. You are the one that blesses. You are the one that create jobs. You are the one that multiply the bread and the fish. Hallelujah. Lord, our faith we release in the Lord God Almighty. We release it to our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to the God that nothing is impossible with Him. Lord, bless your people. Lord, provide and protect. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious saints, the Most High. Hallelujah. Now we're going to go to God's Word. Interesting word that the Holy Spirit put in my spirit and on my heart to share with you today. And that is, I want to title it, A Friend of the World is an Enemy of God. The Word of God says in James 4 verse 4, so I'm just going to dive right into it. And um, we'll make a few statements here and there, but we're going to have a lot of scripture today. So be ready, have your paper, your pens, notebook. Have that ready because we dive into the Word of God. Child of God, I want you to understand something today. To meditate on God's Word is key, is, is extremely important. And I want to say this before we even dive into the Word of God. That it is more important the quality of reading you get in than the quantity. It's more important than to read a small passage and feed on it, ponder on it, think it over, pray it through, and then start and compare it to other scriptures. Ask the Holy Spirit and look up scriptures that is the same right through the Bible and meditate, feed on that. It's extremely important. And as you do that, the Word of God will be alive to you, will come alive to you. And I pray today that the words we're going to read, because we're going to go through the Bible, um, Old Testament, New Testament, and I want you to see the different scriptures, how the meditation, what we do, the teachings we give, you'll see it, it flows out of meditations that God, that meditation, that God put a seed, an idea, a thought in in my heart or a word or he said I want you to talk about um, that my people must not love the world that's about a week or two ago that God started this message with me and then he had me go through the scriptures 
and compare it to other scriptures in the Word. And as I meditate on the scriptures and pray the scriptures through, then the message that God has for His people starts to unfolding in my heart. It's not a knowledge, a head knowledge teaching. It's not a letter, but it's a spirit teaching. And I pray that you understand it. The Word of God says, those that have an ear, hear what the Spirit of the Lord say. And I pray that, child of God, that God will open your spiritual ears today, that you that have an ear, hear what the Spirit of God has to say to you. And that is my prayer. The moment God gives me something, I say, Lord, please let me hear, let me see, let me understand if there's still things in my life that keeps me from my relationship with you or keeps me from entering in or keeps me to have this full life with the Lord. Please show me then in my life that I can fix that with you and your blood and your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And the word for today, God says, friend of the world is the enemy of God. James 4 verse 4. You are like unfaithful wives. Now this Take this into account that this word is written to the believer, okay? To the children of God. This is not to the world. This is to you and me. And God's word is his instructions, his laws that we will meditate on day and night. You are like unfaithful wives having illicit, in other words, illegal, unlawful love affairs with the world and breaking your marriage vow to God, do you not know that being the world's friend is being God's enemy? So whoever chooses to be a friend of the world takes his stand as an enemy of God. That was James 4 verse 4, the Amplified Classic Edition. And this is a very serious word to, to take this scripture and meditate on this scripture and chew on this and say, Lord... Where have I been unfaithful? Where have I been an adulterer? Like King James says, adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. You and I, child of God, can make ourselves an enemy of God by being a friend of the world. And we can just break down what it is in the world because we are in this world. We're not of this world. We still have a body that's connected that gives us a right on this earth, on this, in, in this world to walk here and function here. But we're going to see what God expects of you and me to be his friend. Yet we still walk here. We still live here. We are not a friend of the world, but we are a friend of God. We're going to see, we're going to break this down so that we understand it in our daily walk with the Lord. And now you have to understand that if you, if this, if you have an enemy, and we do, the moment you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, Satan is your enemy. The world is your enemy. Because Satan is the God of this world. This world belongs to him. He is the God of this world. He is your and my enemy. And the moment we have an enemy, there will be conflict, there will be war, there will be wrestlings, there will be struggles. Hallelujah. But take heart, precious child of God, Jesus overcame the world. Take heart in Him. In Him we have victory. So that's extremely important to understand in Him, to be in the Spirit, be in Christ, Christ in us. We're in the Spirit. We're not of this world. We are born from above. We are born from a different world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. The Word of God says in 1 John 2 verse 15 to 17, Do not love the world, or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Yo, that is serious. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And the Father is spirit. And God's word is spirit and is truth. His spirit word. He, he, Jesus even said to the scribes and the Pharisees, you've got Satan as your father. You are the sons of disobedience. He says, you are, do not have the father. Your father and my father is not the same. 
And if you and I have a love for the world and for the things in this world, the love of the Father is not in us. That's God's word. And this is very serious. And and my prayer is, Lord Jesus, help me, show me where there is love in my heart that's not for you, that where I have sinned or where I, I were unfaithful in any area of my life. Lord, please show us as your children. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The moment you identify any of that in you, realize this is not of the Father. And say, Heavenly Father, you gave your Son the blood of the Lamb of your Son. You gave us the power of your Holy Spirit, your Spirit, to set us free. Hallelujah. And the world is passing away. We're going to see that as well today. The world is passing away. We're not going to live on this earth forever. So whoever is teaching that or whatever doctrines that we're going to stay on this earth, there's a rude awakening for you today. This earth is going to burn with its elements. This world is not going to be here. It's going to go away. God says, I'm creating a new heaven and a new earth. So everything connected to this earth, we better get rid of it and break with it in Jesus' name. And the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Hallelujah. He the will of the Father abides forever. And I want to go to Ephesians 2 verse 1 to 6. And you he made alive. <clears throat> so Jesus, the word of God says in the in the King James Version, by grace through faith. And you have made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the, the course of this world. So we were, before we got saved, before we born again, we were in harmony, in agreement, in unity with this world, the Bible says. The Amplified says, in which at one time you walked habitually. So it was a habit. It was normal. It was second nature. It was your nature, my nature, to walk according to the dictates of the flesh of the world. Okay, we're going to break that down. You're going to recognize seeing your life. You were following the course and the fashion of this world. You were under the sway of the tendency of this present age following the prince of the power of the air. You were obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience. In other words, the careless, the rebellious, the unbelieving who go against the purpose of God. This is the Amplified. And the King James says, in which, verse 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So if you and I still recognize disobedience and things in our lives, we have this opportunity now today to make right with the Lord, to be sons and daughters of the Most High. Verse 3, amongst these we as well as you once lived and conducted ourselves, we conducted ourselves in the passions of our flesh, our behavior. So he connects this flesh because we've got this body that's connected to this world under the sway of the evil one. So we, we, we walked according to that. Our behavior was governed by the corrupt and sensual nature, obeying the impulses of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind. Our cravings dictated by our senses and our dark imaginings. We were then by nature children of God's wrath, of His anger, and heirs of His indignation like the rest of mankind. When we still walk according to this world, the anger, the wrath of the Lord, of God is on us. 
But God, so rich is He in His mercy, because of and in order to satisfy this great and wondrous and intense love with which He loved us, even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, He made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. Now we've got the Spirit of the Lord. We're not controlled by the Spirit of this world anymore. But now we are controlled because we accept the Lord. Now we need to be spiritful people of God. Children of the Most High. Spiritful people. Pray this every day. Pray this more than once a day. For the Holy Spirit to fill you. We cannot do this without Jesus. Without the Holy Spirit. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him for. It is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from judgment and make partakers of Christ's salvation. Verse 6, and he raised up us up together with him and made us sit together giving us point joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus the Messiah the anointed one so understand when you are a child of God spiritual child of God you're not supposed to reign here on the earth you're not supposed to sit here in the council of the wicked and walk and be um, controlled by this uh, fleshly impulses and desires and the world and the senses and all these dark imaginings and then and this power of the air this wicked demonic dark spirits no but now we need to be above that in heavenly places seated in Christ Jesus on the right hand of the father then we love the father we love the word we are from a different world we do not love this world and the things in this world but now we love heaven there's a new heaven there's we are not we are not citizenships of citizens of this earth anymore. We are citizenship. We our citizenship is in a better place, a higher, glorious place without sin. Hallelujah! And I made a few statements. Statements here as I was preparing that the Holy Spirit gave me, and I'm going to read this to you uh, as God gave it to me. As God's children, we have to take direction from above. So you see, we in the sphere. In Christ Jesus, in the spirit from beyond, we are on the other side. We are not thinking like the world and on this side anymore. So as God's children, we have to take direction from above, from the spirit, from the Father, in Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Although physically with our earthly bodies, we are still in the world. We are not to believe the same things that the culture around us believe. Although we walk on this earth. You and my belief and our faith should not be in what we see or the things of this world, of this culture or what's going on around us. We are not to behave according to the standards of the culture around us. We are not to behave according to this world and the standards of the world or the culture around us. We should not take our cues from here below because this world is below. But we now, Jesus said to, 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 to when he spoke in the word, in, in the gospels, he says, you, what is from the earth is earth, but what is from heaven is heaven. He says that I came from the father and we are now born in him. So we are now with him above. We are seated on the right hand of the father. And I want to read to us Romans 12 too. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Do not conform to, conform to the pattern of this world. Is your patterns, I want to ask you this, is your patterns in according, in unity, in agreement with the world? world? Or, is your, or do you pattern after the Lord, after the Lord Jesus Christ? but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we're going to see how important uh, uh, the mind is in this loving the world and loving the Father. Matthew 6, 19, 
verse 20 and then verse 33. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. 1 Timothy 6 verse 17. Command those who are rich in this present world, and this was our offering scripture as well, the ones that are rich in the present world not to be arrogant, nor to be, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provide us with everything for our enjoyment. You see, even if you've got, God blessed you with a lot here, you, your trust is not in there. Your heart is not in it. So you don't pattern after the world where they are arrogant or haughty or prideful and trust in their wealth or whatever is going on in the economy or on the market. No, they don't. The world is there, but children of God, your trust is not in the world, but your trust is in an eternal God, a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that is unshakable. This earth can be shaken and it's going to be shaken a lot more. So much so that it is going to burn at the end. But God can never be shaken. He will last throughout all eternities. Hallelujah. How are we to cultivate or pursue the values that are from above while living below? It takes concentrated effort. We must set our minds to it. You've got to set your mind. You've got to make a decision and a choice. And I want to say here as well, I want to throw this in there. And that is the world love is feelings. Is this um, fill you? Is this uh, senses love? And I love you and you must love me back. Uh, so love is what I can get. But God's love is a choice. It's a decision. And it's not feelings. It's not emotions. God anyway supply the spiritual feelings and emotions later. But it's a choice. And for you and I not to love the world is a choice. I gave my life to the Lord and I choose not to love the world. And child of God, if you struggle with it and you say, Diane, I'm one of those that really, I also want to say I love the Lord with my whole heart. I also want to say I don't love the world and the things of the world or in the world. I love the Lord. I love the Father. Then go in prayer to Him with the Word, in meditation, and say, Lord, yeah, your words ask this of me. And I ask you in Jesus' name for your Holy Spirit to work in me to will, in, in, in me to will, to empower me. To put the love of God in me, the love for God, the love for heaven, the love for Jesus, the love for the Holy Spirit, the love and desire for your word, the love and desire for prayer. Ask him because you cannot. I, I want to say this again, and I think I used it in Pray for the World. A lot of people want to first leave sin before they come to God. They first want to be holy before they come to God. You cannot be holy in your old nature. You come with everything, warts and all, to the Lord and with His power and His blood and His glory, He sets you free and He washes you and cleanses you. You cannot do this on your own. You need, I need you to understand that you are so, you need to depend on the Word and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit Word of the living God that is to be your food, that is to sustain you, and that is to strengthen you, that is your joy, that is your everything. You need to meditate on it day and night like Joshua says. Okay, so it takes concentrated effort. You've got to make a choice. We must set our minds to it. We must mind our thoughts. Don't let your thoughts go in every direction. Bring them back and submit them to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. On purpose, you have to think on the word, on God, on heaven, on purpose. And if you do not read the word and meditate the word, there's nothing in you to remind you what's in heaven, to remind you of Jesus. If you're full of the world, then you're not full of the word. 
And if you're full of the word, which is the living word, Jesus, then it's easy to meditate and think and ponder on him. And then you're, you will automatically live that out or manifest that in your life. We are very overwhelmed and overpowered and overburdened and overload and overrun and bombarded with messages, with images, with counsel, knowledge that promotes the below behavior. Social media, TV, movies, um, schools, universities, work, jobs is so bombarded and overpowered by the below behavior and you can put on the tv you can put on a movie and that is not god's way god's behavior god's example how to live that is the world's example how to live even if the messages we receive are not overtly immoral the perspective is one that excludes God and prioritizes things as though life on earth is all that matters. Our happiness and fulfillment, the right to be happy, are top priority. Now that is not God's nature. That is not the spirit mind, the spirit behavior. This is the world behavior, okay? So a lot of times, even the messages, they're not immoral, but their perspective is one that excludes God. It excludes God. And the priority, and it prioritizes things as though life on earth is all that matters. So be very careful when that is your reasoning and that is your mindset. Because then it means you do not have the love of the Father in your heart. If we want to be directed from above, from God, from the Spirit, from our Heavenly Father, we must make an effort to counteract the messages that are omnipresent in our culture. So we have to counteract all those messages and images that the devil bombards this earth Every day, the whole day and night, it just go on and on and on and on. And we have to counteract that with what? The Holy Spirit word of the living God. It's got to be a power word. It cannot just be the letter. It cannot just be knowledge. It cannot be I'm reading through my Bible two, three times and I just have it in my head. No, it's got to be a revelation. It's got to be spirit knowledge, spirit word in you because that has got power to break down the images and the words and the ideas of the enemy and even the knowledge that stand up against the knowledge of Jesus. Hallelujah. To set our minds on things above, we must read and meditate on scripture. Pray scripture. Feed on the scripture. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, be filled with holiness. God's Holy Spirit is holy. He's not just a spirit. He's a holy, pure, gentle, glorious spirit. It's the very life of Jesus. We have to be filled with the life of our Lord, with his thoughts, with his emotions, with his beautiful, sweet, clean spirit. Hallelujah. So we have to be filled with this very spirit of Jesus and not with the spirit of this world. The only way that a person can live according to the above dictates is if he or she is taking directions from somewhere other than the secular culture. If you take your directions or your information or your counsel or your example how to live from the secular culture or from the world, you cannot live from above. Thinking on things above, the truths of God's word not only guide us in what we should do, but gives us the reasons we should do it. Okay, thinking on things above, the truth of God's word, not only guide us in what we should do, but gives us the reasons. And it, one of the reasons, or a few of it, is His grace. It's our positions in God. 
our position in Christ. So if you do cannot meditate and you cannot uh, ponder and know the truths, the revelation knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot be seated in heavenly places. Your position is not sure and secure in the Lord Jesus. We we even get an eternal reward. So there is all these reasons that we should think on things above. It will even dictate our life, what the rest of our life is going to be. What you think on that, you're going to conform to that. And that's going to be your, your way, your life, your path. Okay. As we believe the truth from above more than the lies from below, we will start to act like creatures born from above. I read this again. As we believe the truth from above, in other words, the spirit truth of the Lord Jesus, more than the lies from below, from this world, in this world, we will start to act like creatures born from above, who have been raised with Christ. In other words, just as we read earlier in Colossians 3 verse 1, we seated with him now on the right hand of the Father. That's why, hallelujah, because we were thinking on things above, now we are seated above. Where your mind is, there is your heart, and there you will be seated. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2 verse 11 to 12. Living before the world, beloved, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims. The King James says, New King James, Beloved, I implore you as aliens and strangers and exiles in this world. Sorry, that's amplified. Beloved, I implore you as aliens, strangers and exiles in this world to abstain from sensual urges, the evil desires, the passions of the flesh, your lower nature that war, wage war against the soul. This lower animal nature that we are born with, Satan's nature, the snake's nature, this poison we root it and grounded in bitterness, that's we all are born in that sin, in that nature. Everybody except the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why each one on this planet needs to be born again, except the Lord Jesus Christ, so that he can kill, cut off, take his axe, the word, and kill and cut off the roots of Satan. And then we can be rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus and draw our life, our spirit, our thoughts from the spirit from God Almighty. Hallelujah. It says in verse 12, having uh, conduct yourself properly, honorably, righteously among the Gentiles, so that although they may slander you as evildoers, yet they may be witnessing your good deeds. Come to glorify God in the day of inspection, when God shall look upon you wanderers as a pastor or shepherd looks over his flock. This is very serious word that the Holy Spirit is giving us today. Romans 12 verse 1 and 2. New King James, living sacrifices to God. I beseech you therefore, I appeal to you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not present your body to the world and in the world and for the world, but present your body, therefore, hallelujah, as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. And that's our reasonable service, the Word of God says. The Amplified says, to my, um, and I beg of you, in the view of all the mercies of God, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies again it's a choice you and i have a choice to dedicate our bodies our mind our life to the lord present all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice holy devoted consecrated and well pleasing to god which is your reasonable rational intelligent service and spiritual worship hallelujah 
verse 2, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Colossians 3, verse 1 to 5, If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing His resurrection from the dead, aim and seek the rich eternal treasures that are above are Christ, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And set your minds and keep them set on what is above. So child of God, be a spirit person. You want to overcome sin. You want to overcome this world. Be in Christ. Be a spirit person. Have your mind set on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. On all the beautiful things from above, from the spirit world. The beautiful spirit of our Lord Jesus. And set your minds and keep them set on what is above. The higher things, not the things that are on the earth. Not the things that... If we keep our minds busy with the news and the information and everything on this planet, on this earth, you're going to be caught up in that. You're going to be bound by that. Verse 3, for as far as this world is concerned, you have died and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, which is our life, appears, then you will also appear with Him in the splendor of His glory. So kill Deaden, deprive of power, the evil desires lurking in your members. Those animal impulses and all that is earthly in you that is employed in sin. So all these passions, evil desires, fornication, uncleanness, all these members are on the earth. We must kill them, deprive them, deaden them, the scripture says. The sexual vice, impurity, sensual appetites, unholy desires, greed, covetousness, for that is idolatry, the defying of self and other created things instead of God. Colossians 3 verse 9 says, Do not lie to one another, for you have stripped off the old unregenerated self with its evil practices. The King James says, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. So we're not of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. Colossians 3 verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. What is dwelling? What is living in you? What is active and alive in you, child of God? Is it Movies, the world, the world's ideas, the worldly knowledge, the worldly desires, pride, how to make money, your career. What is dwelling in you? Is it self-pity? Is it rejection? Rebellion? Is it hatred? Is it bitterness? What is taking up the space inside of you, so to speak? What is in your mind? constantly what is in your heart constantly paul says examine yourself test yourself let christ dwell in you child of god precious child of god let christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom in wisdom you see a lot of people just have knowledge knowledge of the bible and it's just head knowledge it's not even spirit knowledge it didn't become theirs it didn't become alive to them so they've got the knowledge but they don't have any understanding and no wisdom ask the holy spirit to give you the knowledge the understanding the wisdom to understand the lord to see what's going on in your life a lot of times when I go through things, I said, Lord, I don't understand why are my thoughts here? Why am I struggling? Why do I feel like I'm cut off from you? And I go check. You know, sometimes you go through the day and you do things and you go and you spend time with people. And then at the end of the day, you, f- you don't feel good at all. You just feel yuck. You don't feel good anymore. And I said, Lord, why? Why? Where did I allow maybe people, friends? To take up the time or the space 
that you're supposed to occupy my life. And you will quickly see where you've gone wrong and where you allowed the enemy to take up space in your life. And so then, get through to your heart. John 7 verse 7, the word of the Lord says, The word cannot be expected to, the world cannot be expected to hate you, but it does hate me. That is the words of Jesus in John 7 verse 7. Because I denounce it for its wicked works and reveal that its doings are evil. So child of God, if you ever think anything nice of the world, understand Jesus said the world cannot hate you, but it hates me. It hates Jesus. John 7 verse 7. This is the King James. Because it hates me, because I testify of it that its works are evil. When we're in this world, or from this world, or think on the world, or in a unity with the world, understand that's evil. Jesus in John 7 verse 15, I just threw this in here because I want you to understand that the Jews were astonished. They said, how is it that this man was learning, has learning, is so versed in the sacred scriptures and in theology, Theologic when he has never studied. And the King James, New King James says, And the Jews marveled, saying, How does this man know letters having never studied? You see, his words was from God. It was from above. It was sent from God the Father. It is the Father through the Holy Spirit and empowered the Word. It's the Spirit Word, words that Jesus spoke. And that is not the words of the world. It's not the wisdom of the world, but it's God's wisdom. Child of God, we want to be like that, even not studied, be intellectual, but we've got the wisdom of God. People will be astonished at, astonished at your speech. John 17, verse 11 to 16. Now I am now Jesus is talking here again. Now I am not longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I love John 16, 17, 18. I love it where Jesus prays for his disciples. He prays to the Father. You see the intimacy with him and the Father, his relationship with the Father. Then you see the love he has for his disciples and the intimacy that he has with his disciples. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you see, there's only way to keep you from the world, and that's in Jesus. Those whom you have, you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Child of God, if you confess that you are a child of God, that you are born again, that you serve the Lord Jesus, you are not of this world as he was not of this world. He is not of this world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. The words of Jesus, child of God, you and I are not of this world. We are not. John 16, 30, 33, These things I have spoken to you, the words of Jesus again, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Take heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take courage. Be confident. Hallelujah. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And you and I, overcome this world through and in Jesus Christ. John 6 verse 63 to verse 68. It is the Spirit who gives life. 
And I want you to understand God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, not the Spirit of the world, not just the knowledge of the Word, but the Spirit Word. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. And this flesh is bound. But it, it's got a right on this earth and this world. We are in a body, fleshly body with fleshly desires that's connected to this world and this worldly desires. Okay? But the flesh profits nothing, the Word of God said. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe because Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by the Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? Remember, this is after Jesus, this whole scenario is after Jesus uh, uh, said to them, you've got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. They got very offended about that, the, the Jews, when Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. They could not understand the spirit. Although they had the law, they could not understand the living, life-giving words of the Lord Jesus. So Jesus said to them, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You, Lord, have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The word says in 2 Corinthians, it says, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 3 to 18, Clearly you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on ta tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is of the heart. You see, child of God, if you are still in the world, of the world, you still got a hard heart, you still got the Spirit of the world, you've got a hard heart, and you do not have a heart of flesh, and then the law of God cannot be alive and it cannot be written on your heart, on that flesh, beautiful heart. The spirit, not the letter. And we have such trust through Christ towards God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Oh, precious child of God, my prayer, my heart's desire for you, the spirit is calling out to you, as Jesus said to the woman of the well, come and drink of me. If you drink of me, you will never thirst again. You will live forever. Hallelujah. Glory of the new covenant, verse 7. But if the ministry of death, now this is the new King James, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Precious Saint of God, and this is a cry, a call, a prayer that really is in my heart all the time. Lord, they couldn't even look upon Moses. And you said that's the old covenant. That is the one that's passing away. He's, was, the glory was so much so that they couldn't even look upon him. But why is it that the church that proclaimed they are spirit people, there's no glory, there's no holiness. The spirit of the world is in the church. And child of God, God is restoring us that we will have his spirit, his glory, his power. Hallelujah. How will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious the world doesn't see that because the spirit of the world is in the church. And child of God, God is, uh, is, 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 is challenging you and I. Challenging us to walk in the spirit, to live in the spirit, 
to be an example of His glory and His power that the world can see there's glory in God. Hallelujah. And it's not dead. It's not a religion, but there's a glory and a power in it. For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. Church of Christ, hear the words of the Lord. Faith comes by hearing. Hear the word of God. Verse 14, but their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. <sighs> Only in Christ you can even understand the Old. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away, O child of God. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and the, the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. But we all with unveiled fills unveiled face behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord Amen only through Christ only through the Spirit of Christ we can please the Father and love the Father and not the world hallelujah the Israelites left Egypt were their physical bodies, but their heart was still in Egypt. Their ways, their mindset was still in Egypt, was still thinking like the Egyptians. Although they proclaimed they served God, their mindsets were still below because they had an unbelieving, fearful God says that when we read the, the Old Testament as well as the New, if you read the whole Bible, you'll see that the mindset, the Bible says stiff neck, heart, unbelieving people. So the mindset was the same, although the Egyptians oppressed them, did not like them, rejected them, yet they proclaimed they were, they were children of God, yet they Without even realizing it, they transformed, they conformed to the world, to the ways of, e of Egypt. We see in the desert how God exposes them and how God exposes the heart and show them the intentions of their heart and the, where their love really lies. We see that right through the word of God as he took them in the desert. And I want to make this statement and say, it's in the deserts of life where we quickly see and learn where our priorities lie. And if we have the love for the Father or the love for the world. In the desert, God exposed that. They still had the mindset of the very people that oppressed them. The hard heart, unbelieving heart, just as the church today, they were still in unity, in harmony and in agreement with Egypt or the world and in the ways of the world. How many Christians are in agreement and live according to the world and not according to the word of God? They still had a fleshly below mindset, an antichrist spirit, a spirit of rejection, a spirit of rebellion. They were against God's prophet, prophets. The word of God says you killed the prophets. They were even against God's prophet Moses. They wanted to kill him. They did not even believe his words. They were against the spirit ways, just as the church are today against God's prophets, against God's spirit ways, against God's ways of doing things. The church wants to do the things the same as the world even growing the numbers in the church, even the setup in the church, it is good organizations, but it is not God anymore. It's not God's spirit. It's not God's world anymore, but it's the world's world. The church is in the world today. The world is in the church, the spirit of the world. In Christ, in new life, we are born from above. We are a spirit people. We are filled with God's holiness, with His Holy Spirit. His Spirit is the Comforter. Now, child of God, God's asking you and me today, 
Is that true in your life? That the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is the comforter. Jesus said, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send you somebody else in my place. The comforter, the great comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Lord Jesus. Now, is that your comforter or the comforter in your life? Or do you still have counterfeit comforters? Like food, sex, drugs, TV, uh, social media, money, fake friends, work, career, gatherings, fellowships with, with fake people, with worldly people, with fleshly people, addictions. What is comforting you? What brings you temporary comfort? That is a counterfeit comfort, comforter and it doesn't last. The world gives comfort, but it's only for a little while. It does not last through eternity. And God wants us to be comforted by the great comforter, the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to read to us in Joab, and I want to bring that together with the book of John, and then also with um, the Samaritan woman that meets her Messiah, and also with Nicodemus that's born from above, born again, born from the Spirit. God says in Nicodemus and in John 3, He says, He speaks to Nicodemus, He says, if you are not born again, in other words, if you do not receive the Holy Spirit, if you do are not born from the Spirit, if you do not acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ as the mediator, as the one that suffered and died, if we do, if we're not born again, if we do not change our mindset and put it above that we think the heavenly things if we do not do that we cannot see we cannot understand we cannot enter into the kingdom of God Job said said the same thing he had the law he had the word of God he followed the law to the T because even after everything that happened to Job he said Lord if I did not give to the poor If I looked at my uh, neighbor's wife, if I did this or that or the next thing, then these curses could come on me. So Job was a righteous man. But he said in Job 42 verse 5, I have heard of you only by the hearing of the ear. So a lot of Christians know the Bible intellectually or they hear the word of God. But he says now my spiritual eyes sees you. But now I see you face to face. When Elisha in 2 Kings 6 verse 17, when he was standing there and there was all these enemies around him, he says, Lord, open the eyes of my servant so that he can see. You see, the prophet prayed for the eyes to be opened. And you and I, child of God, the world is in a turmoil. The world is in a mess. And we need to hear the prophets of God, the true men and women of God that speaks God's word. And as the prophet prayed, the prophet spoke, the prophet prayed for God to open the servant's eyes that he can see spiritually. Not the teacher, not the the, the, the evangelist. Not the shepherd, but the prophets pray. They are the ones that predict everything that happened till now. And when the prophet of God, the man of God, and this is a prophetic ministry, pray that God will open your eyes that you can see into the spirit. That you will fill, be filled with the spirit and that you can see now, you can enter, you can live in and by the Spirit. Hallelujah. In John 4 verse 24, a Samaritan woman meets her Messiah uh, after she um, met Jesus and he revealed all her sins. She ran to the um, to, 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 to her town, to her city, and she told them, and she said, and uh, she told them, uh, I met a man that told me everything that I've done. Now in verse 42 of John 4, the Amplified, and they told the woman, now we no longer believe or trust our faith just because of what you said, for we have heard him ourselves personally, and we know that he truly is the Savior of the world, the Christ. You see, Jesus came into the flesh and he ascended so that we can ascend, so that we can also cross over. He already came in the flesh. 
we have to get out of the flesh and into the spirit. And the only way to do that is even like this people in the word of God, like Joab, like Elisha with, with the servant, uh, like the Samaritan woman with the people that she ministered to. You have to have a personal encounter with the Lord in your prayer closet, not just on the, the teaching or in church. Because everybody says, when is the church opening? And our church is not opening because we don't have a building that we can rent yet. So everybody's saying, when is the church opening? But child of God, I'm asking you, your personal relationship with the Lord, did He become real to you in your prayer closet? Do you have a life, a reality, a real relationship with Him? Do you see Him? Do you hear Him? Does He lead you? In everything you day, do in the day, does he, does he guide your steps? God is asking that of you and of me. The Word of God says in 1 John 5 verse 4 and 5, For whoever is born of God is victorious over the world. And this is a victory that conquers the world, even our faith. Now let's read the King James. For whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcame the world, our faith. So child of God, we do not walk by our feelings or by sight, but we walk in faith. You've got this life. You walk in the spirit by faith. You don't walk according to this world anymore, but now you walk according to the word, the word's world, the world of the father, the world of the spirit, the world beyond. We walk in that world in faith. Although we still have this earthly body, we walk in that world in and through faith hallelujah by faith who is he who overcome the world but he who believes that jesus is the son of god 1 john 3 verse 1 behold what manner of love the father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of god therefore the world does not know us because he did not know him so the world has no intimacy no fellowship with the lord God knows you and me by our fellowship and our intimacy. And we're not part of this world, child of God. I think we read enough scriptures to know that by now. We're not of this world. Now I want to read to you what's going to happen. If you still say, Diana, well, I don't know. Maybe I will still hang on to this world. Uh, they still promise in this world for me, child of God. I want to read to you what's going to happen to this world. And if you are still part of this world, of the system, if this is still your desires, your goal, um, your love, this is what's going to happen to this earth. Let's read it. And Isaiah 24 verse 1. Impending judgment on the earth. So it's, it's at hand. It's close. It's near. It's imminent. Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste, distorts its surface and scatters abroad its inhabitants. Now God took his prophet, his man, into the spirit and showed them what's going to happen in the last days. And this is what's happening in the last days. What's going to happen to this earth? If you still love this earth or the world where the worldly things be careful, be warned today in Jesus' name. Isaiah 24 verse 4. The earth mourns and fades away. The world languishes and fades away. The haughty, the proud, the vain, arrogant, snobbish, self-important people of the earth languish. The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants. The world is defiled by the inhabitants. Because they have transgressed, the laws of God. In other words, they disregarded the statutes. They changed the ordinances. They broke the everlasting covenant. Therefore, the curse has devoured the earth and those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burnt and a few men are left. Verse 20, uh, chapter 24, verse 17. The word of God says, Fear, fear and the pit and the snare are upon 
you, O inhabitant of the earth. This is verse 17 of Isaiah 24, the New King James. And it shall be that he who flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And you, there's no way that when God's wrath come on this planet that we're going to hide away from it. And he who comes up from the midst of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth are shaken. The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it and it will fall and not rise again. God says a new heaven and a new earth. This is going to go away. So do not be, do not be bound by the world, this earth, the ways of the world. It shall come to pass in that day, verse 21, that the Lord will punish on high the host of exalted ones and on the earth, the kings of the earth. God's going to punish. They will be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and will be shut up in the prison. After many days, they will be punished. Then the moon will be disgraced and the sun ashamed. For the Lord of hosts will reign on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his elders gloriously. And we know here by meditating on this word and going through God's word, reading in Hebrews that God said, not the earthly Jerusalem that's in bondage, but the heavenly Jerusalem will reign. The highest mountain, the holy mountain of God, the new Jerusalem, that's where we're going to reign. From the spirit, from beyond, from the other side, we're going to rule and reign with our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Peter 3 verse 10, if that's not enough, for us, let's read more. Second Peter uh, 3 verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In other words, not silent. Suddenly. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. So it's not silent. God's going to come like a thief in a Suddenly. Because you do not expect him to come. And he will come in the night hour. And this world is in midnight. So the thief, Jesus, will come suddenly in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. And the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. Both the earth and its works will be burnt up. You see, when we are connected to this world, to this earth, and we are doing the works, we are still in harmony. We just still meditate, think, reason, live in the world, live off the world. Our security is in the world. We draw our strength, our joy, our everything, the comfort from the world. Be, take he, that the word of God says both the earth and the works because that means then you're going to work the works of the evil one of this world it will be burnt up therefore since all these things will be dissolved that manner of persons ought to be in holy conduct therefore the word of God says in verse 11 therefore since all these things will be dissolved what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness God is telling us to be holy to be holy, godly, look for in hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his prom promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. You see, we're not looking for the earth. We're not looking to save the earth. The souls, yes, but not the earth. Therefore, beloved, why do you think the New Ages and the New World Order and everybody wants to save the earth? That's the only place they've got. Because if you don't have the earth, you're going to go to prison to hell. But if you're born again, you've got a new heaven and a new earth. Therefore, be, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. 
child of God, God's urging you and me to be spotless. Hallelujah. Revelation. Revelation 21 verse 1 to 8. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I hear a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, the new heaven and the new earth. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes, precious child of God, you who overcomes, he who overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Child of God, we're waiting for the Lord. We are meditating, pondering. Our mindset is heavenly, not earthly anymore, because all the old things shall pass away. And if you are still connected to this world, to this earth, to this earthly lusts, that's going to drag you down to the pit. Be warned today. The Word of God says in Hebrews 9, and I just want to put this in here, because this is extremely important. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for Him, child of God, be in eager waiting on your Christ, on your Messiah, on your husband, on your Lord. Those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. The Amplified said, but to bring to full salvation those who are eagerly, constantly and patiently waiting for and expecting him. Child of God, are you expecting him? Are you expecting the Lord Jesus Christ or are you expecting still worldly things and to be a success in the world, for the world, to be known by the world? Child of God, I want to encourage you. Let your expectancy be Jesus. Be known in the heavens. Be known to the Father. Be known to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit. Be known to him, not to the world. God is pleading with you and with me today that we must die kill, dead in the things of the flesh, the world, still this, the lust and the desires for the world and the worldly things, the world, things in the world. Let's kill those things. Let's kill those desires and lusts in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, as we heard this very serious, strong word that your Spirit gave and that you are giving to your children in this time and hour, Lord, I pray for your children that we will hear it, what the Spirit of God has to say for us. Lord, that we will hear it and that we will heed to your voice, to your spirit, that your conviction, that your Holy Spirit will convict us of sin. Lord, hallelujah, of still this worldly things and worldly attitude and worldly addictions and where we have got this counterfeit uh, comforters, Lord, where you are not the comforter, where everything is, where our all and all is not you. We ask for forgiveness, where we were like unfaithful wives, Lord, still hanging on to worldly things and running after worldly things and thinking worldly things, Lord. We are sorry. 
We ask for great forgiveness in this day, Lord. We ask for your delivering power, for the blood to flow, for your power to flow and deliver us and cut off the bondages, Lord, and destroy the works of the wicked one. Lord, give us a desire in our heart to love you. Lord, put the love of the Father, of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the Holy Spirit in us. Put the love for the Father in us, that the love grow in us, the love for the Father, the love for your word, the love for the Spirit, the love for prayer, O oh God, that it will grow and grow and grow in us, that we love the Father and not the world, O oh Lord. I pray for your people, Lord, that they will found the love for the Father, that they will find it, that they will find this relationship, the intimacy, their prayer life, that they will cultivate it, Lord. Hallelujah. Teach them, teach them to meditate, Lord, that you can speak to them and with them in Jesus' name, that you will be the one that guide us and dictate our actions and not the world and the culture, but you. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you for this word, this glorious word that cut off the bonds of the enemy. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you for your blood, your grace and your mercy. And thank you that you still speak to us, that you still, Lord, your, your spirit, your anointing, that's here today, break the yokes of the enemy. It breaks it over our lives in Jesus name. We thank you. We appreciate you Lord. We bless you in Jesus name. Thank you precious child of God. Thank you so much friend that you joined us, that you sat through this time, the word with us. We will see you next week again at Ark Studio, 9 a.m. South African time. Um, as every Sunday you can join us. Um, you can subscribe on the YouTube. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And remember, tomorrow night, Monday night, 9 p.m. South African time, we have Pray for the World. And Pastor Francesco from Brazil is going to be with us and Rosanna is going to interpret for him. And then you can also watch us at um, Pray for the World, YouTube, Facebook Live. And then also our live streams are available. Our audio and video live streams for Pray for the World is available at PrayForTheWorld.com. And also remember to subscribe for our free prayer material, which is very exciting. It can also, as I said, help as a devotional for you if you want to learn how to read the word and then pray the word with us around the world for God's glory. And God's mindset to set in. Read God's word, precious saint. Meditate on the word. Do not love the world and the things of the world or that's in the world. But love the Father because the word was so strong. God said when we started, if you've got the love of the world in your heart, you do not have the love of the Father. And I pray for you and pray for me and we pray for each other. That God's love will overtake us. And I pray God's love will overtake your life, your heart, your mind in Jesus' name. And it will keep you in Jesus' mighty name through His power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love you. Bless you. Thank you again. Amen.